I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about volume by cylindrical shells. In problem number seven, we'd like to use the shell method to find the volume of the solid formed when the region bounded by these four curves is revolved around the y-axis. And the curves are y equals one divided by one plus x squared, y equals zero, x equals zero, and x equals two. Uh, okay, so I've drawn the curve up here. Uh, this is the curve y equals one over one plus x squared. And um, now we're going to take this region that's bounded by those four curves, and we're going to spin it around the y-axis. When I do, I would get a shape that looks sort of like this. Let's see, we, you get this kind of, um, it's almost like it's a cylinder and then it's got kind of a, a bell sitting on top of that cylinder. Okay, so a short cylinder with a bell sitting on top. So that's the shape we're looking for the volume of. And uh, again, let's review, we've got volume is the integral from a to b of 2 pi r h dx. So 2 pi radius times height. And remember that's just the area of the outside of a cylinder. So it's easy to remember. Uh, so we just need to plug in what we know here. a and b, it's where do I start cutting up things into cylinders? And where do I stop cutting up things into cylinders? So if we go back over here, we see we start cutting these lines that are going to make our cylinders once we spin. And we start cutting at zero, and we stop cutting at two. So we're going to integrate here from zero to two of two pi r. Okay, if I take a random x over here in between zero and two, and I make a slice at x, and then I spin that slice, no surprises, I get a cylinder. And the question is, what's the radius of that cylinder at x? Well, the distance from the middle to x is x. So the radius in this case is x, and then h of x is the height of that cylinder and the height of this cylinder is the functional value, which in this case is one over one plus x squared dx. So this is the integral that should give me my answer. So let's integrate it. First of all, I can pull out the two pi. So I get two pi integral from zero to two of, I'll multiply the x inside and I'll just write it as x over 1 plus x squared dx. But this is a fairly simple u substitution problem. I can u substitute for 1 plus x squared. The derivative is x. So let's do that real quick. I'll let u be 1 plus x squared. The derivative is 2x dx. Uh, so I could move the 2 inside and attach it to that x. If I do, then I just have pi integral from zero to two of two x over one plus x squared dx, uh, which now I see I could rewrite using my u substitution as the integral of, on top I just have du, and on the bottom I have u. And now I can change my limits of integration because I just changed into a different variable u. So let's change our limits of integration. If x is zero, then u would be one. And if x is two, then I plug in two for x up here and I get two squared is four plus one would be five. So now I'm integrating from one to five. This is a simple integration, so let's do it. This is pi. Uh, antiderivative of 1 over u is ln of the absolute value of u 
evaluated from one to five. Let's plug things in. This gives me pi times, if I plug in five, I get ln of absolute value of five, which of course is five, minus ln of absolute value of one. Okay, so I get pi times ln of five, and then I get pi times negative ln of one. But ln of one is zero, so this is just zero. Pi times zero is zero, and I have my answer, which is pi times the natural log of five.